Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he's only got good things for us. We just submit our will to his. It's not easy to do as human beings. Understand, but we submit our will to him. He's got good gifts for us, good things in store for us. Thank you for standing. Testing one. Is it on? Thank you. Sister Fiona's going to come. Before she speaks to us, we want to welcome our newest member to the church. <laughs> Baby Michaela's here today, fast asleep, I'm sure. Um, it's so good to see you. Nyasha, Kofi, Michaela, Effie, so good to have you guys here. Welcome, Michaela. I'm sure she'll remember at some point. <laughs> She's just a bundle of joy. You need to have a look if you haven't. Just don't crowd her, please. But not that you'll break her, but you know. Um, but she's. Um, we're so glad to see you guys. I'm glad you're doing well. And you're all awake. Praise the Lord. Praise Sister Fiona. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. A new year is upon us. And one thing I know, God was in control in 2020. And he remains in control in 2021. My desire for me, but also for each of you, is that we will go deeper with God in 21. Yes. Psalms 42 and 1 compares the deer panting or thirsting for water with our souls longing for God. That's how I want to be, thirsty for more of God. The funny thing is, the more of God you get, the more of God you want. I want us to enter into realms we've never been before. But we're going to have to be intentional about that. God just spoke to us about that. We're going to need to pray more, to fast more, to spend more time in his word, to be more obedient to him. But the result of that is that we'll live in the realm of signs and wonders. At a conference with Brother Gleason a few years ago, he encouraged us in, in prayer to speak out what we wanted to see God do. And while I was doing the ugly cry, I told God what I wanted to see. Then I went back to my seat and I typed that into my phone. I wrote it down so I'd always have it. And actually, Daniel and I compared notes that night and his were, you know, I just want to see my family saved. <clears throat> they were good. They were good things. But I went so much bigger. And I looked at it yesterday. And wouldn't you know it, some of those things have started to happen. I wanted to see this church filled to overflowing. We're beginning to see that. I even said I wanted us to be a part of a building program and that that building wouldn't contain us. We're about to enter into a building program. Fast forward five years, who knew? Who knew? God knew. Those weren't the only things I wrote. I said I wanted to see the dead raised. That one scares me a little because it means someone has to die. But it also means I'd have to have the faith to pray them back. That would take radical obedience and a deep trust in God. But you know what? I'm going to see it. I want to be a part of it. I don't want to be a spectator. I want to be a part of it. There were other things on my list, including salvation for my family. And at times, that looks impossible. But so did building a church debt-free. I don't just want my dreams to come true. I want yours to come true too. But we're going to have to do our part. We have to be surrendered to God. We just heard that and allow him to use us. This year can be your best year yet. This year you can be closer to God than you've ever been. And together we can see God do great things. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's got a plan for us, for this church, for you, for every single person. Praise God. Amen. 
Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, if you could turn with me to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. God. I mean, if you walked in this morning, you may have seen a bright orange sign up on the projector here. Um, Sister Crystal designed that for us, and it's our theme for 2021. Madison, if you could please put it up there on the screen. It's very simple. It's you, me, we. Very simple words, you know, just three, three little words, but they can make the difference in everything. You know, if it's just you or me, there's no we. But you and me equals we and when we are together when there is a collective we god can and will work so let's have a look at john chapter 17 we're going to read from verses 20 to 26 john chapter 17 verses 20 to 26 and it goes i do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word and that they may be one as you, Father, and I, as you, Father, and, I, and in me, and I in you, that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me I, will give, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and they, the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, as you have loved me. Father, I desire <clears throat> that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which you have given, given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to you, to them your name, and will declare it that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. This was Jesus' last prayer request. His last prayer request, and it starts off in verse, 31, in verse 21, and it says that they may be one. That was his final prayer request before leaving the earth, that they may be one. And that is the desire of the Lord, that we be one, and that is how we get things done when we are together. This morning, I want to talk on this title, The Power of Together. The Power of Together. You know, and it seems to me, especially when we look and reflect on the last year that we've had in 2020, um, it seems that I have a greater appreciation for doing things together. There's a greater appreciation for being together, spending time together, wanting to do things with friends, family, brothers and sisters. There, there, is, this, there is this urge in my mind that, you know, together is actually better. And when you reflect on the last year we've had and the isolation and being locked in our homes, etc., together is better. God never intended for us to travel this journey we call life alone. He never intended for that. As a matter of fact, some of the greatest expressions of his love are seen in the people that he surrounded us with. He has surrounded us with friends and family. He surrounded us with people that we can talk to about anything. He surrounded us because God did not mean for man to be alone. And the power of together is found wherever there are healthy relationships. The power of together. It's God's incredible gift given to you and me to save us from ourselves. And we all need that person in our lives that can talk straight to us. We all need that person in our lives that can just look straight through and say, do this or don't do that. And, and it's God's gift to us and it helps, it saves us from ourselves. For when we are isolated, we do silly things. When we're alone, we make mistakes and make decisions that really don't benefit us. The principle of together is recorded on page after page of the Bible. Together. We. God's provision in our life is almost in every sphere is found in the context of the power of together. From the dawn of humanity, from Adam and Eve, togetherness has been the organizing principle a meaning, of a meaningful and fulfilling life. From the first two humans created. They were together. May I suggest to you that there is not much the devil fears more than Christians standing together in unity. 
The devil knows that if we discover the power of together, the power of we, that unity, there is almost nothing we cannot do. Which is why the greatest pain the devil can bring into our lives is to bring the pain of separation. To bring disunity, to bring dysfunction, to bring isolation instead of the power of togetherness. We. The Bible tells me that the greatest power that allows the unsaved to make a decision for Jesus is in prayer, though that is important. It isn't in the good things that we do, though that is important. It isn't in good behavior, though that is important, but is in the power of being together. John 17, 21, we've already read, it says that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. There is power in togetherness. When we are united, the world will believe. When we are together, the world will believe. When there is unity, the world will believe in a savior because together is better. Jesus' final prayer request was for unity. Power lies in unity. There's power in prayer, amen? Amen. But there's more power in unified prayer. There's power in worship, amen? But there's more power in unified worship. Psalm 133 and 1 says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Together is better. United, together. The power of we, you and me together. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Life forevermore starts with how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. There's power in unity. The Bible tells us about this tower that men wanted to build. The Tower of Babel, we call it. We know it as. Absolute unity made nothing impossible to humanity. So they build this tower, reaching up to the heavens. And in Genesis 11, 6 says, And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they have all one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Why? Because the people were one. Now, God didn't want that tower built. Well, look at what man can do. We can build a tower up to the heavens. No. And if man can get together and start to build a tower, how much more is it true when God's favor rests on his own people and we stand together in unity, together? There's power in unity. There's power in unity. There's power in praying, reading your Bible, coming to church, giving of your tithes, your offering, your time. There's power in the love of God. They are all important. But Jesus' final prayer request was that we all be one. We be together. Why? Because Jesus understood that the church would never make the impact on the world it needed to if the church was divided. We need to be united. And I'm not saying we're not. I'm not saying we're divided, but I feel in 2021, if we stay united, if we embrace the power of togetherness, great things can happen in this place. Great things can happen. J. Gordon Melton was a um, Methodist minister and he had an unusual hobby. His hobby was denomination hunting. Denomination hunting. He scoured the country of the United States of America from the West Coast to the East Coast and decided to write down all these different denominations that that he would find. At the end of his journey, he found 1,200 different denominations across the country. The Church of Kennedy. These people believe that if you pray to John F. Kennedy that he would intervene on your behalf. I don't know. No, no. Maybe they're Republicans, they're Democrats. I don't know. But they believe they could, they, could, they could pray to John Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, and can be cured of both congen- congenital defects and terminal illnesses. There was this church of the Ministry of Universal Wisdom. 
They looked for flying saucers to come because that would be our salvation. And then there's the church. This is almost like the church of today. It's the church of what's happening now. What can I have now? What can happen now? A very contemporary church. Out of all of these 1,200 different denominations, he only found a few that called themselves true Christians. And out of those few churches that he found to call themselves true Christians, he found that the greatest growing church were the ones that remained united, that weren't divided, that stayed together and did things together. And that unity, the power of togetherness, is where the strength of the church lies. It's where your strength and my strength together lies now, I want to tell you, unity does not mean uniformity. Big difference. Uniformity, you can't see it here, but if you look on the outside of this building, you've got bricks. Uniformity is the bricks are the same. Might be a bit different in color because of the batch, but that's uniformity, same bricks. If you look at this carpet, and they might look like squiggles, but if you put them on top of the other, there is a uniformity to the design of this carpet. Unity does not mean uniformity. 1 Peter 2 and 5 says, you also as living stones we're living stones now if you go and go out there to the yard and pick up stones you're not going to find two stones that are the same and we are living stones being built up a spiritual house a royal priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ bricks are uniform stones are unique and we are lively stones every member of the body is not the same shape but all are fitly joined together by the master craftsman. We don't lose our personality when we gain our identity in Christ. If we lost our personality, we all just be the same bricks, but we are lively stones. We keep our personality as we gain our identity in Christ. Why was his last prayer request, this last prayer request that we've read about so important to Jesus? Because God dreams. God has dreams and his dreams can be held captive by our limitations. If we are not unified, God's plan will be held captive. Remember that this prayer that he prayed in John 17, 21 was in the midst of bickering, prestige-seeking disciples. In the middle of that time, he prayed that we all be one. How must they have felt to hear that prayer? Because they were jockeying for position. Who's going to be the greatest? Who's going to be the least? And then he prays this prayer, Lord, that we all just be one. They must not have liked it. How do you feel not honoring the request? Lord, I, let us be one. Let us be one. God put us here to make each other stronger. To find each other's strengths, we need to be together. Matthew 18 and 19 says, And again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If two agree, two people agree. There's more than two here in the building today, but the Bible says if two agree and ask for anything, anything, it will be done for you. It'll be done. When we agree in prayer, God releases blessing on what we pray. The power of prayer is not the result of the person praying. Rather, the power resides in the God who is being prayed to. That's the power. But there's more power when we do it together. When we pray together. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we will have the petitions that we have asked of him. When you ask to ask together, agree together, asking anything. There's no magic formula for prayer. The only thing we need to do is pray in Jesus' name. But it's not a magic formula, it's Bible. Our prayers being answered is not based on the eloquence of our prayers. We don't have to use certain words or phrases to get God to answer our prayers. But the key to answered prayer is found in together, in agreement. When two of you agree on earth concerning, concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. The power of together. God wants to answer 
But when we agree on the prayer, that is when we will hear. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16 says, But speaking the truth in love may grow in all things into him who, have, who, who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective workings by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Nowhere on earth should the world catch glimpses of heaven more clearly than in his church. With God's body, you and me, the body of Christ. But we can often become distracted by self-interest at the expense of a very keen sense of mission that sets the church apart from all other groups. We can be self-absorbed. We can, we can be internally focused and forget about the commission to go into the world. It can happen. It can happen easily. We can get this what's in it for me mentality. It's not about me, the ministry team, the worship team, the musicians. It's about we together. Everyone together. There's, there's more that we can do when we're all together. There's only so much I can do, my wife can do, you can do. Sister Paul, there's only so much you can do, but when we do it together, we can go further and reach further. Deuteronomy 32 and 30 says, How could one chase a thousand? And to put 10,000 to flight, unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had surrendered them. One of you might be able to take 1,000 and put them to flight. But two, two logic would say, well, two should be 2,000. But the Bible says, yeah, two can do 10,000. Put 10,000 to flight. It's a multiplication effect when we are together. Solomon tells us that two are better than one. Ecclesiastes 4.9. It says that when two lie down together, they can keep each other warm. Ecclesiastes 4.11. Now, that's only if you're married. The will of God is subject to the will of man where the church is concerned. Now, we heard about that this morning, Brother Daniel, through the tongues and the interpretation of that tongues, that God wants us to surrender his, our will to him. We heard that this morning. And, and, and the will of God is subject to the will of man. It's subject to you and me. Let me give you an example of this. Harrison, why don't you come here? Now, this is a, probably not the best example because he's grown a little since lockdown. He's a lot taller. When we used to wrestle when we were younger, Harrison would often win. I'm not going to do it today for obvious reasons, right? But Harrison would often win. She al almost always, yeah? You sure? No, didn't think so. Harrison would win. I was always stronger than him. I was always stronger than him, but he would win because there's, there's power in that. And I'll explain to you the principle of that, Harrison. My strength is made weak. And to, in that wrestling moment, to that extent, the child's will is imposed because I, I let him win. Of course I was going to win when he was five years old. Of course. But in that moment, my will was weak and his will was imposed on me. Remember Jacob wrestled with an angel all night? Do you remember that? Do you think the angel wasn't strong? Do you think the angel couldn't have defeated him like that in a moment? God could have struck Jacob down with one foul swoop. But instead he wrestled an angel all night. God gave Jacob the opportunity to wrestle all night. Basketball was invented in 1891 in America by a YMCA PE instructor. His name was James Naismith, and James nailed two peach baskets to a balcony at either end of the gymnasium. He chose two teams of nine players, 13 rules, and an old soccer ball. Now, it was the US that perfected the game and campaigned to have it included in the Olympics. But in setting the guidelines for the Olympic team, the US made a mistake. The rule the U.S. set was to qualify to play basketball for the American Olympic team, you must, you must never have earned any money from playing basketball. What a mistake, right? So you couldn't have your professionals play because they earned money from the sport. No other country had this restriction, just America. They specified that you could only play if you've never received money from playing basketball. That was the only qualification for the Olympics. So the U.S. suffered loss after loss after loss after loss. 
The sport was invented in 1891, brought into the Olympics sometime after that. And until 1990, 1992, not that long ago, they never won a game at the Olympics. But the rules were changed in 1992, Barcelona, Spain. And that year, the dream team was born. That's what they known them. That's what they called them. 11 of the greatest professional basketball players of all time. Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and many more. The dream team was now bankrolled by 16 corporations. They won all of their games by an average margin of 43.6 points. They went from losing to being the best forever. They lived up to that dream team. I remember that 92 Olympics. I remember the, the, the hype around this American basketball team that had come in and calling themselves the dream team. It wasn't proven, but they lived up to it by winning each game by over 43, average point, over 43 points. Rick Wells, the president of NDBA, says, when I think, when peop when I think people, I think people looking back 100 years from now will view that as, that, that as the most significant two weeks in the history of basketball, the Barcelona Olympics. It sent the sport into high gear around the world. So what does that have to do with what I'm speaking about today? God is often unable to put the best team on the field because of unsubmitted wills. God can make a rock so heavy Sorry, there's a question actually. Can God make a rock so heavy that he himself cannot lift it? Yes, he did that with our wills. It can become so heavy that God cannot lift it. God said in Genesis that my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is flesh, indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. Disunity a lack of submission of our will costs us our credibility because the world already sees a lot of that. Matthew 8 and 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. The most incredible expression of the power of together is when Christ is in us and we in him and we are together as children of God. He's with us all the time, no matter where we go, no matter what we do. That is why we know it's going to be all right, because we have the Lord in us, in our lives. The purpose of Christ is our, is, is our, is our simplest thing. You know, the, the spirit of Christ is the most simplest thing. If you're going through trouble, just know, God, you are with me. You are with me. You are with me at all times. Temptation has killed its thousands, but disunity its tens of thousands. And babies die easiest in a fight. No one has ever left the church because of God. God's reputation can be ruined because of us, his children. Gandhi said, I would have become a Christian if it were not for you Christians. Gandhi said that. There's power in unity. And I remember hearing um, a, a message from Because of the Times couple of years ago and and the preacher that was supposed to come to retreat la, um, last year had this um had this example of these metronomes you know and these metronomes you start with one metronome and as the metronomes grow they, they start to eventually come into unity with the sound it was an amazing and it was an amazing example of unity and and the power of it and these and and you know he talked about when soldiers cross over a bridge when they're marching together they all march opposite steps so they don't crush the bridge because it's power and togetherness. And I thought, well, I can't show you those examples. So I find this very interesting. You know that I like nature documentaries. And, and this documentary producer did a, did a show about blue whales and their song. The biggest mammal in the world doesn't speak, but it sings. But that's not all the story. Blue whales sing the same song at the same time all over the world. Think about that. Same song at the same time all over the world. Not only do these amazing mammals sing the same song, but they also sometimes change the tune in perfect unity. When the Pacific Ocean blue whales change their tune, tests and research has proven that the songs change amongst the blue whales in the Atlantic. That's amazing. That's God's creation. 
as if it was there's some sort of mastermind orchestrating their music. The Bible talks about tithes 24 times, offerings 265 times, fasting over 100 times, prayer over 100 times, but the word together 484 times. There's importance in that word, the power of together. Gathered together 97 times. As we enter this new year, we don't know what it's going to hold, but we know God is in control. We're looking forward with excitement to this year. But we need to embrace the power of togetherness, the power of we. The power of we is so evident in the Bible. Jesus tells his disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. So they go to Jerusalem, they find this upper room, and and they're there. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're not just sitting around, just waiting. I think they're in the presence of the Lord. They're praying, they're singing songs. And the Bible records that they were all in one accord, Acts 2 and 1, and then the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. They were together. They were together in one accord. That wasn't in a Honda, no. They were together with a singleness of mind, if you look at the root meaning of one accord. Singleness of mind seeking after the Lord. They were together in one accord. And then they were together in one place. Hebrews 10 and 25 tells us to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. There's power in together. When we meet together, there is power there. When we come in one accord, God's power can move. On the day of Pentecost, when they were in that one room in one accord, the Bible says that suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And it appeared unto them cloven tongues, as of fire sat upon each and every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. That was the power of togetherness that day. That was the, that was the evidence of that power of unity coming together, seeking after the Lord, gathering together in a building. Something supernatural happened that day. And as it is for you and me today, Together we can make a difference. Um, Sister Madison's going to come. Together, you and me can make a difference. When we pray together, God will hear and he will answer. Together we can go out into all the world and reach people. Together we can gather in church and worship our king in spirit and in truth. Together we can make a difference together we are dangerous together we are dangerous look out devil together even with our differences because we are lively stones we are dangerous together we can be bolder we can be braver we can be stronger And this morning, I encourage you, as we go through this new year, let's do it together. Let's do it together. Last year taught me that together is important. Being together with church family, with with our families, with our friends, it's important. We need each other. I need you, Sister Pauline. I need you. I need you, Sister Grace, Sister Bull, everyone. I need you. We need each other. We need each other. And then when we can come together in this place, God will reveal himself to us. When we are together, there's power in togetherness. There's power in being together. Let's stand this morning. Yes. Just listen to these words this morning. Singleness of mind. Hear our cry, be lifted high in this place. Together, God, together, Jesus. We want you, no one else will do. Yes.
Here I cry. Here I cry. Be lifted high. Be lifted high in this place. Yes, Jesus. If you want to spend some time in prayer this morning, I invite you to come. Pray for this church. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for each other. Thank you, Jesus. In this place. Thank you, Jesus. Chains are broken, eyes are open, miracles are in this place. Hearts are mended, grace extended, miracles are in this place. Chains are. 